This show is powered by BL3P, the lightning enabled European Bitcoin exchange. Connect the build. Prashant, founder of Bringen, Lithuania. The 2024 Summer Olympics, officially known as the Games of the 33rd Olympiad, will be held in Paris, France. This will mark the third time Paris has hosted the Summer Olympics, with previous editions in 1900 and 1924. The Games are scheduled to take place from July 26 to August 11, 2024. Do you think cricket should be included in the Olympics? Yes. Naval Ravikant is a prominent entrepreneur, angel investor and philosopher. He is best known for his co-founding AngelList, a platform that connects startups with investors. Have you ever had a personal conversation with him? No. South Indian cuisine is renowned uh, for its rich flavors, diverse ingredients and unique cooking techniques. Dosa, idli, biryani and sambar are some of the most popular dishes. Is South Indian food the only type of cuisine you enjoy? No. Do you think dark beer is the best type of beer? Yes. Iron Maiden is an iconic British heavy metal band known for their energetic performances, powerful music and captivating album artwork. Do you think The Number of the Beast is Iron Maiden's best album? Yes. Bangalore's traffic is notorious for being quite heavy. Do you think Bangalore's traffic is man manageable during peak hours? No. We were told Amsterdam is your favorite holiday destination. Do you know the oldest stock exchange in the world is the Amsterdam Stock Exchange, which was established in 1602 by the Dutch, India, uh, Dutch East India Company? No. Do you think you will hang you will have a hangover this weekend in Prague? Probably. <laughs> Your name is a 2016 Japanese animated romantic fantasy film written and directed by Makoto Shinkai. The movie has received critical acclaim for its animation, story and emotional impact. The soundtrack of Your Name, composed by Red Wimps, is highly praised. Do you think the music adds significantly to the movie's impact? No. Are you Satoshi Nakamoto? No. Welcome to the Connected World Weekly Podcast. I'm Edward. And I'm Steph. We are ready to take you with us into the beautiful world of the Lightning Network. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. ride. This is episode 113 of Connect the World, and this show is made possible by our friends from BL3P and Bringing. And Bringing makes selling and spending Bitcoin from any wallet super easy and reliable. So thank you guys for helping us out with our mission to connect the world with uh, Bitcoin through the Lightning Network. And if you also want to help out, then head over to our Telegram group where you can ask us anything. And of course, subscribe at our YouTube account. And a donation is always welcome. Connectează lumea. There's Prashant again. Welcome yeah, to the show, Prashant. Welcome, Prashant. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be back. Thanks for hey, having me. And you're this. not uh, Satoshi Nakamoto uh, <laughs> still. So <laughs> yeah, I will do it twice. I will do it someday. Maybe a third time. <laughs> if we ask a third time, yeah. then... Uh, <laughs> hey, um, yeah, we found out that it's almost exactly one year ago when uh, we had you on the show. It was episode uh, 77. Uh, and a lot uh, changed. Well, it, it, it didn't change that you're still not Satoshi Nakamoto, you just found <laughs> out. But um, uh, you moved uh, to Europe, um, from yes. Bangalore to Europe. So uh, how, how is that going? I mean, you, you certainly are not missing the uh, Bangalore's traffic uh, jam and, and all, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. And yeah, moving to Lithuania was not as easy as I thought. Like, uh, like the problem with India is there's a lot of, lot of people and the appoint getting appointment in the embassy is not easy. So I actually had to, um, it's a funny story, I had to go to Singapore to get the appointments and I submitted documents there. So yeah. I had to fly to Singapore twice to get the DRP uh, approved and it took a couple of months, but yeah, it was not easy. It, it's good. No, and, and, and for how long are you now living here? 
Uh, no idea. So uh, it depends on how the company goes. And I have a TRP for two years, which I can extend based on the business activities. But let's see how it goes. Yeah, and and the business was also the main uh, driver for you to to move to uh, Lith- Lithuania, right? Right. Yes. So uh, Lithuania was uh, provided a sort of uh, temporary resident permit, and uh, it's a very thriving environment for fintech companies as well. So. Uh, it's more. Uh, it makes sense for us to start be established in Lithuania for a while. Yeah, yeah. And did you also um, like search for other countries? Were there other countries on your on your list, or um, was it already uh, yeah made out for you? Yeah, Estonia was uh, the first option actually. So uh, I lived there, so I kind of had a life there. So ah, I wanted okay. to move back to Estonia. But the problem with Estonia is not the problem as in like the criteria was uh, the startup program would require an MVP, which means like in in our case, it would be a product where you move funds, real funds. So as you can imagine, it takes a lot of time to build a MVP, which can move funds. But Lithuania was much open for uh, providing startup uh, TRP based on startup program, based on our idea. So um, that's why Lithuania or Estonia. Yeah, it yeah, gave, it gave you more uh, possibility, of course. So, right. uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's a good choice. Hey, um, you didn't know that uh, the Amsterdam Stock Exchange uh, right. is I the don't... oldest. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought this is uh, something you're going to like. So you ob- obviously like Amsterdam, but now it's uh, <laughs> it's the best, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, that's amazing. I, didn't, I actually didn't know that. So uh, that's amazing. So much history. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, <laughs> and we we were also in the the the, the tulip scheme, right? So uh, oh yeah, uh, so yeah. we have uh, big similarities to uh, to Bitcoin too. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, um, yeah, and um, when I um, I I obviously know that you're a big fan of cricket. Mm-hmm. And I was searching about cricket, and then I found out it it, it isn't even part of the Olympics, and it uh, yeah right. it. it it isn't really, it? No, it's, no, it, it no. isn't part of the Olympics, and I was like, "What? A, why is that?" Because it's 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 a pretty big sport, not only in India, but but um, for for yeah, many other countries too. Um, do, right. do you know the, why? What's the reason behind this? Yeah, so the main reason is the actual cricket game goes for five days, five whole days, no six days. So the original game was oh, for six days, yeah. and now recently they have introduced shorter form of cricket but the original game goes for six days. So, and the shortest form is played for uh, like four hours in total. So that okay. game could be included in Olympics, but uh, yeah. that's the only possible game that can be included because it's very long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, but, uh, I, I, I didn't know that. Played, no, me too. But is it no. played in, 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 in uh, like the six days or is it played in six consecutive days or is it like every week one day? I, I, I'm totally new to cricket, so I'm. Right. Excuse um, me for for asking stupid questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no worries. I mean, Dutch team plays well, good cricket actually. So, uh, so like, it, it's continuous six days. Uh, it's like the game starts at morning nine-ish, or depending on the lighting condition based on the country, yeah. and it ends in, uh, in the evening again. Based, the time based on the lighting condition, lighting conditions. So it's paid for six days. Before it was for six days, now reduced to five days. That's that's one format of the game. But of course, like new formats got evolved, which is like one day cricket, which happens in one day. And recently there is a shorter form, which happens in four hours. So that's yeah, yeah. the one which is getting more popularity, the shortest form. Hey, and, and if I- you want to start with, with cricket and want to learn it, uh, uh, then... Then well, I'm. <laughs> you're not it gonna t- play. It takes a week, sixty right? years. It takes sixty <laughs> years, Edward. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not gonna ask for more than. Uh, <laughs> you you must show us one uh, one day. <laughs> I'm very yeah, curious. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, are you yeah, are sure. you on the conservative side, uh, Prashant? So are you the one who is you know, keep it to five or even better six days, or are you on the on the more like the the newer side of of keeping it in in the four hour time frame? Like. Both kind of crickets are fun. Like one, it's a different fi- kind of fun, right? Like the six days, it, it it has more action happening and then more twists, and it, it it's a different kind of fun. But shorter form is also f- nice. But what's happening recently is the older form is dying off because people want uh shorter things like fast. Yeah, yeah. Like like yeah. 
the range in span is reducing and people are lacking more shorter form and that is getting so much popular the old forms are played a lot lesser eventually that will probably uh be very less than the shorter form which is yeah, yeah, but yeah. both are good in a way well it, it's 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 like uh, the perfect game for uh, people with a low time pre- preference right uh, if you if you if you like, I, I, ca- I can't imagine that i'm a big football football lover and right. um and like and like six days is is, is like th- then we, we play a whole tournament right i mean you can play uh f- numerous matches uh so so it's it's yeah. crazy man so it's, it's crazy so, so, yeah, I, I, it's it's difficult to uh, <laughs> to imagine how how that must be, but um, but it's 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 fun. Uh, I, we we learn something, Edward, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, this man. is very interesting. <laughs> hey, Prashant, yeah. uh, besides uh, the Hangover, of course, um, what are you guys uh, are going to do in uh, in Prague? Uh, because you're a partner uh, of the conference, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's interesting actually. So uh, like I'll be the only one. Like no one from the team is coming there. So okay. uh, I have a booth, so I can kind of have to manage the booth and then meet people as well. Ah, so, that's great. And on thirteenth, uh, we are part of pitch contest finals. So uh, on thirteenth, around no exactly at twenty fifteen, oh no fourteen fifty, mm-hmm. I'll be pitching and sharing a story about bringing in the cont- uh, as part of the pitch contest. Okay. So I'm yeah. mainly focusing on pitch contest at the moment. And then later, uh, like I've invited all the users to visit the booth. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So well, if cool. people want to meet you, then uh, they can uh, search for you at the booth. Right. And, yes. Uh, booth number 30. Awesome. Booth 30. Ah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Right. Okay. When right. booth, 30, booth 21 was already uh, <laughs> occupied? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's unfortunate. That's Next unfortunate. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's talk about bringing, guys. Um, yeah, let's, let's do uh, that. I mean, we're, we're just, it's, it's uh, uh, a year passed by, so there uh, were a lot of developments at your side, so uh, we definitely want to talk to you about it. But it has to be in the 21 minutes, as you know. So mm-hmm. um, let's, uh, let's uh, dive into that part, guys. The 21 Minutes is brought to you by Bringin, the app to reliably sell and spend Bitcoin from any wallet. Yeah, like Steph said, a year ago, a lot uh, happened, of course. Um, We've seen a lot of tweets about Bringin. Uh, How has it um, evolved since the last time we talked? And what were, um, uh, for example, some major updates uh, or improvements that you implemented uh, before uh, uh, talking to us earlier? And maybe you can also add um, how these uh, improvements impacted also the user experience and the platform uh, performance, if you're happy with it, or uh, what can uh, be better. (laughs) Sure. Uh, So like last year at this moment, we didn't have the product live yet. So we were trying to get the product live. We were like increasing the waiting list and then uh, teasing out what we are going to give the users. So around October, we took the product live and it was barely an MVP because people could just do one trans- one kind of transaction, do on-chain payments and get euros into the bank account. The main USP was safe for bank transfer since we provide IBAN accounts to every users. So Pinsent wasn't working, but still the reviews were good because all the transfers were safe. Like uh, the private beta was only for 25 users. So eventually uh, we added Lightning support and opened the access to all the users from the waitlist. So that's when it really added more value. Like people can keep their lightning invoice and we fix the supplies and payments. So now both happen at the same time and we uh, opened access to everyone from the waitlist. So now what yeah. happened in February was like people can pay a lightning invoice, get euros into the bank account instantly. Like it takes one second for instance of a transfer, right? Yeah. So now that created some kind of, that, that, that means a lot. I mean, I've, I haven't seen any product in the world before where you can get Bitcoin from your like, you know, self custody wallet to euros in your bank account. So uh, that got a lot of attention and people started using it a lot. And yeah. it also drive a lot of people's attention as well who want to liquidate a huge amount of Bitcoin. So, uh, so now today we have onboarded around 700 users, totally yeah. everyone transacting, uh, total amount of tra- uh, funds transacted is closer to nine Bitcoin. So like we have also introduced our tier three or KYC, which allows them with hundred thousand dollars limits. So we have a couple of users doing uh, huge amounts of transaction in one go. Yeah. So one user made a 90 
1.4 BTC transaction in one go. It happened in less than 15 minutes. You rose into his revenue Crazy. account. Crazy. <laughs> and, and it wasn't so, on the Lightning Network, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is on chain. But uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, it, it happened in 15 minutes. It's like, uh, and most of the users I interact with say it feels like magic because like, Literally two years ago, I faced the same issue. So uh, I used to use Binance because Kraken at the time did not support Japan withdrawals. So mm-hmm. Binance was terrible shitty UX and then yeah, it took almost it four days to get euros into my bank account. And yeah. now I keep all my uh, say, like my salary, which I take from my company, a little bit, whatever I take as a founder. So I keep it in blue wallet and I keep maximum 200 euros in my Revolut. So every time I want... I'm sure bring in works. That's reliable. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So you're you're yeah. you're getting high on your own supply. <laughs> we say, yeah. right? Are, so, and right. are you living on a Bitcoin standard then, also, or uh, if that's called Bitcoin standard, yes, because I keep 200 euros, okay. so I don't like I just liquidate. Yeah. So if I want to do any big purchase or if I want to pay rent, I liquidate a huge amount. Otherwise, I liquidate under the 150 euro at at the time. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's always in hey, but, but 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 one point four Bitcoin you said right in fifteen minutes. Uh, and and I'm I'm curious because uh, did did this uh, person if if you know him experience any troubles at his side of the account? Because I can imagine that if if your bank account sees uh, well in, in nowadays uh, uh, over a hundred k dollars it transferred to you in uh, in I think in, less in, in no it's time. A I mean, uh, yeah, they're 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 going to. to Ring from ring from bells, I can imagine. So, uh. so the, the the user is extremely happy. So I'm I'm connected directly with the user on Signal because user told he would liquidate over 200k yeah. in a couple of months to buy a house in Sweden. So uh, I kind of was like, uh, I said you should be able to do it. You know, like we got him the higher limit, yeah. and then he tried out first 50k, it worked, and then. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, today, today or yesterday, so 1.4 Bitcoin and it kind of worked like, I mean, the reason is, so the Revolut sees the transfer is coming from the IBAN account that we provide to the user in his own name. So this IBAN account is like you can hold a bank account in WISE or Revolut or in Bringin. So that's your choice to hold your IBAN account in any of the services. So transfer coming from any of your IBAN accounts, it's treated the same. It doesn't matter if it's bring in or why. Yeah, or okay. So so for, for for the bank, it's like they see there's the KYC on both sides. Both bank accounts belong to the same person. So there's right. no in, in, there's no immediate red flags. I mean, right. maybe if you transfer millions of dollars, then <laughs> uh, so then they're going to to phone you and, and say, yeah. <laughs> and both bank accounts are from the same bank. Uh, not, not always. Not. No, 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 not not always. No, well, not th- always. that's uh, also an interesting thing, right? B- uh, because maybe one bank uh, has other uh, thresholds than than other banks, perhaps. But it, yeah, yeah. So since it's coming from users on account, it's like yeah. user is transferring from one account to another account. To another. So yeah. uh, any bank should be fine with that because it's it's user own KYC in multiple banks. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, now we have solved. Like I could. I could confidently say uh, Bringin is the safest off ramping product in Europe. So if you want yeah. to get a huge amount of Bitcoin, Amazing. or yeah. like, you know, you want to get some stats out of your uh, wallet from your yeah. Stack and Use account to Euros, you can use Bringin. That makes it very powerful because you, you also said just now that a lot of new users are, are uh, using it that didn't use Bitcoin before. I think that's the most interesting uh, thing because that that means that it can add to uh, to the adoption. Right, for sure. So our product is streamlined to just three steps. Like you send Bitcoin from any wallet and you get euros from into any wallet. And also the IBAN account that we provide is like an user experience which the user is already familiar with. It's a IBAN account. And we are yeah. launching a debit card in coming days, but it's it's uh, you can chip in the funds into that, and then pay a bit uh, send Bitcoin to your uh, any wallet. So we don't give wallet at the moment. So users can use any wallet, and the user interface is stupidly simple. Yeah, yeah, and 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 now it it always it also clicks a bit for me when why you say it's like the safest way because um, other the, the other option is to use like an exchange or mm-hmm. something, but then you don't have a IBAN account yeah. that's 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 like um, KYC to your own. 
So yeah. then you so get flags, right? If you then yeah. suddenly yeah. transfer 150, 200K, then you have to phone your, your bank and say, hey, there's a big uh, um, right. amount of money coming my Where way. Where does it come from? Yeah, don't yeah. block it. It's, 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 it's yeah. legitimate, uh, you know? And then the bank, uh, I mean, in Holland, uh, <laughs> I don't know for other <laughs> yeah. countries, but in Holland, there are a lot of banks who want to have uh, a big of, uh, they, yeah. they want to search your history and, and all that kind of stuff. So... Um, yeah. So Where do you do your groceries? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that kind exactly. Of stuff. Yeah, yeah right. it's crazy. Many banks yeah. would just send a transfer back. They say that we won't allow okay. such kind of transfers. Like you know, like our, I've seen a lot of revolute. So when I was uh, use I was trying to find alternatives, right? So I saw a lot of revolute like Reddit posts on revolute where they say why they don't accept any transfers from exchanges. So yeah. that has that yeah. has changed over time. But uh, like banks in Belgium and they're most at getting transfers from exchanges they just send it back and they say send user notifications we can't do it things like that yeah. So, yeah. yeah so if you want to liquidate your bitcoin um don't do it very often you can better stack <laughs> sets but if you want to do it <laughs> use bringing <laughs> right i mean <laughs> it's the yeah, same yeah. as way <laughs> hey, and, yeah. and you said 700 users are already using the service can you share any success uh, stories of or uh, user feedback that you uh, got from from that from that group uh, that have been uh, particularly encouraging or insightful for you guys. So earlier, our doctors have been very supportive. Like they're super active on giving feedback. In, in like they would take time or take a screenshot. I suggest like oh this button should be there and all that. Offering uh, some help to do it for free because they're uh, they, they like the app and they uh, are willing to test any new feature we roll out. Even though if it doesn't work, they will give they'll take time test out give feedback. So uh, the best feedbacks is like I uh, was so we onboarded an investor uh, Dan Sanders recently. So he's uh, he was a user of Bring In First, and then when I talk to him on on the call, he says it feels like magic, and then he invested in Bring In. So an uh, uh, engine investor, a small check, but uh, it's. Uh, it's, it's sad, like when people say it feels like magic. A lot of people go on Twitter yeah. and they said, I just tried bringing it, it feels like magic. And uh, there's a tweet, there's a tweet from one user, he says it works like charm. And then there's so many tweets like that, nothing provoked people going and talking about bringing. And there's That's one great. user who says they're underrated, they need more marketing. So there's been a lot of positive reviews, but I think what we're doing is not, uh, we're not doing justice to the product. So we want to put more efforts in marketing and give it to a lot of people. With time, I think it's more of a moral responsibility for handing over this tool to the people. They really need it. So coming to success stories, there are users who get paid in Bitcoin from uh, US companies as consultants and they liquidate uh, regularly every month, five to six K. There are uh, some users, most of the users are from Netherlands, Germany and Spain. Okay. So uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's nice. So uh, uh, Europe is a uh, yeah. It's it's uh, much used in Europe. Yeah, right. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Hey, and um, well, um, to bring all those people that uh, aren't using Bitcoin and uh, can mm -hmm. use Bitcoin through bringing, uh, user friendliness is of course very important. Um, what do you think? Uh, well, uh, what have you improved already, and what uh, do we still need? Um, in that regard in in the future for uh, for bringing maybe some part of education or uh, some uh, feature ux or i don't know yeah yeah for sure so currently we are only giving it to bitcoiners right now like because we yeah. are very small and there are enough bitcoiners who want to use this product right but this will change like as we want to onboard the next million users right so so the first thing is education is a first strategy so we will have an app education system where they can learn uh bite size bitcoin and uh like and everything and we mm -hmm. will give a self custody lightning wallet so i think last time i i mentioned or uh, we are building a, a wallet with breeze sdk so the yeah. node is running on yeah. green light and then you can manage your uh bitcoin which you can manage the node on the phone which directly interacts with iban account so the UX, so we have uh, advisor onboarded who is a, a research lead at Ledger. He's been helping us with UX strategy, how to interact with users and understand exactly how UX, like UX as in from the way they find the product till they use a product, right? So we provide an IBAN account, which is very familiar for the, uh, which is familiar user experience for the user. 
with some education will give us help with Lightning Wallet along with that so that it makes it easier for them to manage both of their Ivan account where they can spend Bitcoin, buy safely, hold it in their own custody and things like that. So uh, yeah, for sure, UX is an important yeah, uh, yeah. role yeah, to play yeah. for new users. And, and what's also important, and, and we know because we are from, from the Netherlands and here in Europe, we have like uh, the, the, the regulatory um, accounts for, for whole of Europe. Um, uh, have there been any changes in the regulatory landscape that have impacted bringing operations or strategy or, and that's what, uh, what I was thinking about, everything um, feels, and I also when I, um, I hear you talk, everything runs so smoothly. So, <laughs> and then when it runs so smoothly, it, 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 it well, it says that it, you guys have found something that really works. And then I can imagine yeah. that people who are um, opposed to or, or um, want to... Um, I want to hurt Bitcoin, especially from within the European Parliament or something. They they are come after you because they want to. Yeah, they they are going to um, uh, to think of like uh, um, uh, really simple things to to destroy um, uh, your your smooth operation. So after after are, are there any changes here in the re regulatory landscape that have impacted uh, bringing these operations already, or are you afraid of some things that might be uh, on the road? <laughs> Yeah, sure. So like, uh, like previously, before bringing, I used to work in a company called Striga. That before was building consumer app application. It was branded as last bit. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of yeah. it. Yeah, I know it's, right. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's when tested. it was a roller coaster ride. Like things were like uncertain, like regulatory hurdles were coming again and again. Yeah. So it was like, we had to fix it. And we took the regulation approach took the licenses and then that's when we got the VASP license in Estonia, which is revamped after, uh, you know, that like there were uh, several money laundering scams happening in Estonia mm -hmm. and then they, they uh, reworked all the licenses and they revamped and which is almost in par with my car. So overall, like if you see Ringin, it's not coming from a very a wallet development approach, like how Lastbit did, but it's coming from an angle where compliance first approach because like we know this went wrong last time and this time let's fix the fun compliance let's check all the boxes and yeah. with this constraints how can we get the better ux for the people so since we're taking a compliance of first approach and we checked all the boxes they can't say anything so like yeah we are abiding by the regulations so now we have to check all the boxes yeah, yeah, yeah. and nothing can stop unless you change the regulations again so yeah and then you check the boxes again. It's right. it's uh, it's it's yeah. almost a game. No, but I I, I think it's inter interesting that you took that that approach uh, to first check all the boxes, get a, a licensing, and then well then then you can just do business. Right. I think that's um, that's a good way to start. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask about the evolving regulations um, and how to ensure compliance, but I think you just answered it. Uh, but of course, you uh, you have also some help uh, to ensure compliance because right. I think that's very difficult uh, still, right? Yeah, for sure. The compliance is the hardest part, which right now we have all those two partners that I really know, like uh, very, uh, know very well, right? So, uh, yeah. but eventually I would like, we will have our own compliance team in-house. Of course. Uh, for scaling. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and most of the companies I've heard will go into compliance. I'll try to stay as much as possible. A technology <laughs> company, you know, like building on yeah. Bitcoin, also all the yeah. lightning and also so compliance to someone I can trust. Yeah. So that's yeah. what we're doing right now. But on and, and do, do you feel it limits your, um, like your, uh, um, well, your work or, or um, yeah, like the, the involvement of your product, is it very limiting to that or, or is it just doable for you still? We, uh, like right now, f like most of the support tickets are related to KYC and I don't like it, right? Like when people say, okay. yeah, well, I'm not getting access to the product, it, it hurts me to say that uh, this is yeah. because like your nationality is from here and regulation doesn't allow and all that. So, so that takes a lot of time and uh, like, and also like there's one feature request or one we really want to give, we want to give well an address, but we don't hold the license. Our partners won't implement because we are not making huge volumes, right? So oh, okay. we are trying or constantly yeah. trying to f f uh, make a, uh, like find a workaround, like, you know, partnering with other wallets, using it as a, like we always find a workaround. So, so being a technology company allows us to find workaround, check the boxes, still get the yeah. cool, cool features to the users. 
So yeah, and and yeah. and um, having more people uh, uh, users in, and then still knowing, well, this is where we want to go, and then eventually, right, uh, you're making more volume, and then you can uh, do it a different way, right? Because of course, uh, and we get yeah. our own licenses, we'll have more flexibility. Uh, yeah. We can, yeah, of course, uh, build the things that we want. Yeah, um, I, and no, no, no Steph. Yeah, and I, well, away, well, and, yeah <laughs> I know I saw that you guys are also working together with BTC Pay, um, yeah. um, and uh, this makes it possible for solopreneurs to to receive uh, euros instantly to their uh, bank account. Um, how do, um, how is how can this change the way for solopreneurs to use the internet to serve customers uh, globally? Yeah, for sure, this is revolutionary for sure because like not bring in exactly but still the btc pay and like with bring in and entire thing so first internet give an opportunity for people to serve customers around the world so this is huge right like the the entire world is a market like users can sell product to anywhere in the world but now f- comes a barrier of payment so having multiple currencies sending moving funds across the globe uh and then the settlements are not instant that compliance hurdles and the products which offer instant in international payments are also charging like three to four percent they hold the funds for one week and not give it to you instantly so yeah. all these hurdles are there and now the, the open source software like bdc pay and bdc pay is amazing like they have built all the infrastructure that allows users to get payment from anywhere in the world and and over bitcoin over lightning they made it easy i mean of course like there are a lot of community that host bdc pay f- for other people but once it's hosted the amount of tools that anyone gets is uh, a lot but of course still there is a problem of volatility even if a customer is willing to pay in bitcoin as a merchant as a business holding bitcoin has volatility risk especially if you're like using the same funds to reinvest in your business so that's when liquidating to euro makes it a game changer right now you're getting all the advantage of bitcoin like it's instant settlement and then it's anywhere from the world and all this advantage and uh, minus the volatility risk is that is you just directly in your yeah. IBAN account where you can uh, like l- l- get it to your bank account, spend it with yeah, debit cards it, and all that. It also benefits you even if you're not a Bitcoiner, right? It can right. still it, it can still greatly ben- benefit you. The right. only thing is that you need to have a bit of knowledge about how things work, how bringing yeah. words, how BTC pay work. Uh, so that's the only thing that uh, that um, yeah is keeping and that's people away. Easier. Yeah, that's uh, th- yeah. Uh, that's why we just have a plugin right now. We're not entirely focusing on making it uh, like a white label, completely easy to use solution. So we could easily white label BTC Pay, provide a simple interface like how Bring an app is. They don't have to know about Bring BTC Pay and get it done. Uh, but for today, they need to know how Bring in BTC. Yeah, they should yeah, know yeah, how yeah. BTC Pay should work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, and um, which markets are you targeting next? Uh, and I, uh, I'm also curious in what challenges do you anticipate when expect uh, expecting to uh, expand uh, globally uh, and with white label label a- API solutions? Of course, that's uh, interesting for other uh, companies to integrate it right. uh, within their uh, scope. Yeah. Uh, so uh, mainly, we want to focus in Europe for one year. Uh, yeah. at least because it's a big enough market and there's so much work to do here and there's so much people to serve here and as we grow we want to first uh, uh, go, go to UK and then yeah. we will expand <laughs> you, to other you can finish you can finish no, so then, it's okay. <laughs> then we'll expand to other jurisdictions as well uh, like uh, mainly we'll start with Africa and more, more towards uh, east not west because west yeah. is already having a good infrastructure but like there's a lot of companies in US and Latin America, so more towards the east, where uh, like India and Africa and yeah. Philippines and Indonesia and all that. So the main hurdle that I would anticipate is again the regulations. Like right now, if Europe is fine. Like uh, kind of, I've been working here for a while and some the regulations. So there's a clear way. There is regulations, so that's one. In other yeah, places, yeah. there's no regulations. It's a gray area, so we should wait for the regulations and to find the yeah. uh, yeah. to. How yeah, but, but I think in, in, in history you saw that, um, uh, for instance, Europe is, is having now something like uh, MICAR and then people of other uh, countries or, or regions that don't have any regulations or it's easy for them to just copy 
I like uh, the things we have here in in Europe, right. and then yeah. make it make some slight changes to it. But I think, well, we know here in Europe it's it's pretty harsh. <laughs> so if you um, well comply to to the, the to the regulations we are used to, we are uh, we have here, then uh, there's a big chance you um, you comply to every uh, regulations around the world. So, yeah. Right. I so reckon that's, a, that's a great strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh man, so start. much questions. Ah. Uh, we need to ask you uh, uh, another time again because uh, yeah, um, there's so much happening with this product. I, I think it's uh, it's awesome to follow. So uh, thanks again, Prashant. <laughs> thanks. thanks for having me. Here. It was great to talk yeah, to you of guys. Course. Connect the world. So we have still uh, one question left for you, uh, Prashant. Absolutely. Uh, and you may choose yourself because we pre-recorded some questions. Uh, we pre-recorded one from Anita Posh from Bitcoin for Fairness, mm -hmm. uh, from Gerardo Linares, he's from Bitcoin Berlin in El Salvador, or from Andre Loja, and he's from the organizer, also the organizer from Bitcoin Atlantis conference in Madeira. So which one uh, will it be? Uh, from uh, Andre from Madeira. Like Andre you're a user. <laughs> Here he comes. Hi, my name is Andre uh, from Bitcoin Atlantis, Madeira Island. Uh, why don't you start a community yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. question. So yeah, we will. So uh, right now there's already a community around bring in and people, we're getting people who want to use like Bitcoin in their daily lives. So it's a very uh, different kind of community and uh, we will uh, make more community related activities, sponsor more uh, meetups and we'll definitely do that. Yeah, awesome. cool, cool. Yeah, I yeah, think I mean, the, really the, the early adopters are, are are already giving great feedback. And uh, I mean, do you guys also have a, 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 a group like on Telegram, Discord or something where people gather together to, to discuss the project or? Uh, not yet. So I think it's the time we'll start doing it because we're a small team. We need some kind of resources to make, like be active there and all that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. we will start doing that. I think it's time. We'll do it. Yeah, right. cool. Yeah. And then yeah. be aware for uh, impersonators, right? Who are uh, <laughs> going to slide into the DMs, like pretending they're Prashant or something. And, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tilt me. Well. Yeah, thanks again, uh, thanks Prashant. Again, well, Prashant. <laughs> where can people uh, follow you? We also asked it the, 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 the last time you were on the show. but uh, Yeah, but now people, to, uh, uh, the, uh, everybody who's st still not using it, uh, try right. it. Yeah, and yeah. Where uh, can people follow you? Yeah. Uh, like best place is Twitter. Like more than my yeah. personal account, bring in XYZ. We post a lot of cool things. Like my personal account, I mostly talk about bring in. So uh, you can follow me at bring in XYZ Twitter. Uh, sorry, my Twitter handle is Prashant C123. And uh, yeah. Twitter handle is bring in XYZ. So if you want to try the product, bring in XYZ website yeah. and then click get started and uh, you'll be yeah. navigated yeah, yeah you have yeah. a great w website with a video um, uh, to check it out and then uh, uh, the onboarding is uh, uh, very easy so yeah um, thanks again and of course for everybody who's listening in uh, thanks for helping um, the to connect the world with us together um, and if you like our content, then please support us in our mission. Visit our website, connecttheworld.live, where you can also make a donation and subscribe, like, and share our content on your favorite platform. So remember, we need you to complete our mission, connect the world. So keep those nodes running, sets flowing, and try bringing. And see you all next week on the same lighting channel. Adios, uh, Prashant. Thanks, Prashant. Bye. See you. Bye, bye, bye. Thanks, thanks for having me. Bye.